Hi YouTube, we're at Université de Montréal. It's a little noisy here. I don't know if you can hear. It's a concerto competition in a few weeks and everyone's practicing their concertos. Hopefully you can't hear. So, I'd like to talk to you today about speed of attack. What is speed of attack and how do we use it to make a different kind of sound, a more refined sound? Usually this is for a more ringing sound uh, or a more, let's say, uh, air, air-like sound or even water. You could say water-like sound. How do we get that ringing sound and what is speed of attack? So, I want you to imagine uh, if you have sp uh, if you have a car and you drive a car into a brick wall, it's not the same as if you have a truck and you drive a truck into a brick wall. So this is the factor of weight. But so when you play and you're looking for a certain volume, you put more weight into the keys to play louder. But this is not the only factor. This is the one that we're pro that's probably the most common. Is weight is not the only thing. The other thing is speed. So, going back to our example, if you have a Honda Civic and a Mack truck, uh, there's also a difference if you're driving at 20 miles an hour and 100 miles an hour. So there's a different type of impact with the Honda Civic, let's say, at 100 miles an hour or the Mack truck at 20, uh, at 20 miles an hour. You understand? So this is the, the situation we have with the weight we put. That's like the bigger car and the speed. That's like the speed at which we're hitting the keys. So the best way I have found to explain this, which is the best way that I learned to understand it myself, it's like if you break an egg on the edge of a frying pan, you don't just push it on and make a big mess. It's the speed which you hit it with. That's what makes it break. So when you take that egg, you go, and it's the same with the piano. So the speed that you hit the note is going to make a difference in sound. Might be very hard to hear in this recording, but there's a definite difference. So if you have, uh, let's say we're lowering the key all the way. I'm lowering one key all the way down. We could count this like, let's say zero. It's not anywhere. Now it's like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. We're already at the bottom. If you have a grand piano, most of them you probably noticed, when you touch it, there's a kind of bump. There's a little place where it stops and then it goes chock. This is where there's something in the action of the piano we call a, a jack and a roller. This is where the jack hits the roller and there's a friction. So it kind of moves it. Uh, at that point. So when you're uh, using speed, often what we do is we don't go to that point. So what happens is, I'll try to find a picture for you, the jack doesn't actually uh, slide, there's no friction against the roller, you're just hitting the key fast enough that it just bounces, it bounces up. So this is what happens when, when we don't go all the way down in the key, the moment where you put your speed is relatively high. So here's something you can do to practice this. Play like this, put a hand over the hand that's going to play, and play upwards like this. Let's say you're going to hit this hand with this one. So you learn to play not only going down on the key, but up from the key. This is usually have the speed. Now this is just a practice. We don't actually play like this. It's not necessary, but it's just to understand the movement. So eventually, you can do it without flying off the piano. So this is the speed of attack. Let's say you play something, for example, my teacher would always use. speed for this kind of music than we would use for something that's 
more expressive, let's say, you know, like a more... something like this, or maybe even. go more with this kind of speed of attack to get that ringing sound. So practice this, going upwards, because you have to do it fast. So this will uh, get you to be a little more comfortable with this speed. And the other thing I want you to practice is listening, because there's two sides to this. There's what you do with your body, the way you play. Uh, so that's everything that's technique, let's say hitting the note faster. But there's also, uh, listening is, is the most important thing. When you imagine the sound you want to create and you hear this ringing sound, if at some point you begin to combine these two things, you don't need to work so much on thinking about hitting the note faster, it becomes more of just a reflex because you hear a certain sound, then you play it. You automatically do what you have to do in order to get the sound out of the piano. So I want you to practice, practice this exercise. Practice also playing. Double your notes when you want to use more speed. This really helps because you have to stay high in this in this key. I want you to see this. Let's see it. Let's see how well we can see this. I'll try to do it while holding a camera. I don't know if you can see that, but I'm hitting this key. I'm not I'm not hitting it all the way down. Whether it goes down all the way is not really important. It's that the moment where I'm applying the speed of my attack. I'm just going in here. I'm not going all the way down here, just here. So this is a great, great, great way to practice because this is where we're making our sound is always between, let's say that bump we talked about in the beginning is around four, uh, oh, hold on, maybe seven. If we're talking about this, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, here's the bump. Then there's eight, nine, ten. You're always making your sound between one and seven. Eight, nine, ten is, it's not, it's not better. So it's kind of like, like you're playing on a cushion. There's this cushion inside the keys with some kind of spring. And you're always working inside that. That's where you're making your sound. When you put more weight, you have a more expressive sound. When you attack the note faster with more speed, then you have a more uh, floating kind of sound. And in the end, when, once you've ex explored different ways of attacking the note, the most important thing is that you hear the sound in your mind, you imagine it, and then you play from there, hearing it first.